People across the state of Oregon forced to flee as fire moves in. The in highways. Oregon, a state of emergency declared as 36 wildfires burn across the state. But Elijah. over and over again, you hear stories of people just scrambling to get whatever they could to get out of their house in uh, town. You think you're prepared, but when it comes right down to it, you just lose focus and uh, you just grab what you can and get out. Level three evacuation notices started going out in the area around 7.30 tonight. Go now, that means several. So to kind of give you an idea, that's blue sky. This is the smoke. It's coming over. And looking to the west. And Oregon is on fire. Uh, the county just to our uh, south and east has uh, five uh, major fires going on right now. And we have uh, huge populations that are either in level one, two, or three uh, stages of evacuation. And it really begs the question, are we ready if these fires, and I'll show you, uh, we have a major fire burning uh, just to our southeast here. And are we ready to bug out if we have to? And how does that affect our um, RVing? And I'm not talking about uh, camping. I'm talking about using your RV as your method to bug out. And welcome back to the Happy Place Diaries, the channel that helps you get the most out of your RV. And we do that through tips and uh, reviews and, and all that stuff. And in this case, getting the most out of your RV has nothing to do with camping or enjoying yourself, but being prepared. And as I said at the beginning, my state is literally on fire right now. And there are people evacuating all over the state of Oregon. And what does that mean uh, to the average person that doesn't have the luxury of having an RV like this? Well, it, it becomes a struggle. But those of us that have RVs can take advantage of that and be better prepared in the event that you get that call to evacuate. In this video, I'm going to share some thoughts with you and some ideas that might help you get better prepared. Uh, even if you don't live in, a, in an area of the country that is prone to uh, nat natural disasters, it's always a good idea to be prepared. So first things first when it comes to being prepared for any natural disaster, evacuation, or, you know, having to bug out real quick is to arrange your evacuation ahead of time. And what I mean by that is have your ducks in a row. So a couple things is you need to know where you're going to go. You can't just hook up and drive. Now, like in the case of Oregon now, you know, they've arranged for, you know, community colleges to take in uh, not only uh, people that need shelter, but, you know, it's a, it's a college, so it has big parking lots. So they're allowing people to arrive there with their RVs. Um, so know where you're going to go. Uh, map, map out the route that you're going to get there. Um, if you are on the west side of Portland right now, uh, and I'm talking outside of Portland, you need to know which roads are open. Uh, because of the high winds and stuff, we've had lots of power lines down, lots of trees down. The fires have, have closed off roads. So know where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. Have a designated meeting place. Uh, you know, at, at the time that I'm recording this segment of the video, uh, Teresa's at work. And so if we were to bug out right now, um, how would Teresa and I communicate? How would, how would she know where I'm going to go? If I've got to hook up the trailer and get out of Dodge, she has to know where I'm going to be. So have a plan to designate where you're going so that everybody knows where you're going. Write that plan down. Uh, you know, 
Ha have it to where your relatives know where you're going. Have it to where uh, the people that live in your household know where you're going, where to meet. And then listen to NOAA uh, because they're going to give you the best weather data. Now, I'm currently studying for my ham license, so I have a little ham radio. And right now, I can't transmit on it, but I sure can listen on it. And I've got, I've got it set to NOAA. And it's uh, broadcasting, and I've been, uh, about every hour I've been trying to keep up to date with what's going on in our area and where these fires are, and that's going to give me a little bit more advanced warning so that I could be better prepared for the bug out if need be. Okay, next on our list is plan what you're going to take. And that's where the RV comes in real handy because you can pre-position everything that you need to take in the RV. And I kind of started that process last night. Uh, a couple things uh, to, to make note of. Uh, prescription medicines. Uh, make sure that you have at least 14 days worth of prescription medicines in your medicine cabinet in your bathroom. Uh, you should never leave home without it anyway, but make sure that you have a first aid kit. And not just a boo-boo kit, but something that's going to be able to handle something more significant, you know, if, if you need it. Uh, make sure that you throw a case or two of bottled water in your tank. One of the things that I did this morning is I ran my uh, fresh tank and got it cleaned up and I added water to the fresh tank of the RV. I mean, I've got uh, you know 70 gallons um, that I can tow with me so why not have 70 gallons of drinkable uh, usable water on board ready to go uh, two things on that or two thoughts on that uh, number one I'm not draining resources from people that might need it um, I'm carrying everything I'm self-contained um, and so you know I'm not taking away from people that aren't as prepared. Uh, and number two, uh, yeah, it's it's just there, uh, ready for me when I need it. Um, make sure that you take significant documents with you. Now, you should do that anyway. Um, we keep our significant documents in a little fire safe. Um, birth certificates, social security cards, um, you know, marriage certificate, uh, you know, if you're a veteran, you need to have a copy of your DD-214, uh, a copy of or, or access to um, your eligibility uh, letters uh, so that when you roll up on, on something and, and you need um, care or you need benefits, um, you have those documents with you. Go ahead and throw those in your trailer right now and, and preferably in something that's uh, fireproof. Uh, make sure that you have your driver's license where you know, I mean, you're all, most of you, <laughs> I'm assuming, are adults and you keep uh, your driver's license on you um, at all times. Uh, concealed carry permits. Uh, anything that, that, that you might need where you're going uh, so far as documents. Um, make sure that you have access, and luckily nowadays um, a lot of the stuff is available electronically. But have your insurance information, not only your automobile, your RV, but your homeowner's insurance and all that stuff. You, you need to have all of that stuff. Uh, deeds and titles, titles to the RV, titles to your car, uh, deed to your house, uh, things like that. Um, make sure that you're protecting any stocks, bonds, things like that that you might have. And, you know, we keep all of that in our safe and we've transferred a lot of that to the little safe and now it's ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, make sure that you have access to your bank uh, because and, and you know luckily it's 2020 um, and you should have uh, a lot of that on your phone um, but make sure that you have access to that and it, if it's documents that are online only download those documents so that you have them when you need them. So those are just a couple things uh, to prepare. You know, clothing, 
I, I'm not worried about clothing. I'm not worried too much about food. Although um, we have the refrigerator on board and we went ahead and threw some food uh, in there, our dry goods in the pantry, um, it's loaded and, and ready to go so that we can, we got about 24 to 72 hours um, worth of food on board. Um, our, our fridge right now is plugged in so it's nice and cold so that if we have to bug out, as long as we keep this cold, it's going to be good for about two, maybe three days, as long as we're not opening and closing it. Um, the things in our pantry are, are good, non-perishable foods that we, that we have. But clothing, um, there's Walmarts everywhere. Um, if I need to replenish clothing, uh, you know, there's laundry mats and, and stuff like that. I'm not going to overload um, with everything out of my, out of my closet. Um, but I, I am loaded uh, to take care of me, uh, Teresa, and people around us for about 72 hours. And that should get us into a rhythm um, once we have to bug out and, and find that location that we're going to be safe and that we can monitor the situation of our house. Uh, we can monitor the situation of our family. And, but... Uh, going prepared and not uh, scrambling um, at the last minute. You know, a couple other items that you might want to throw on your list. Make sure that your propane tanks are full. Uh, grab a couple green bottles. Uh, you know, if, if you're using lanterns or, you know, Blackstone stoves, um, that it never hurts to be a little bit uh, more prepared. Uh, keep in mind, you, you know, you got to do your weight and balance. Uh, just like you would normally do with your RV. Uh, create checklists, uh, put them on your phone, uh, point of contact, uh, people that you're gonna that you're gonna get a hold of uh, in the event of a bug out. But you want to make sure that you're prepared um, because, uh, and, I, and I tell you just from the experience of watching the last uh, 24, 48 hours um, here in Oregon, um, emergency services are tasked to the absolute maximum and so if you are not a dire emergency you're not going to get services uh, and that's not a knock on f police and fire the, God bless them they are doing everything they can um, but I am not in the danger zone I am not a priority and as long as I can uh, put myself in a position that I don't have to take away resources from other people that really need it. Um, that's what the RV really provides. I've got a bed, I've got heat, I've got shelter, I've got mobility, and I have the ability uh, to sustain uh, for um, quite a while uh, in my RV. I hope this information um, is good for you. I'm not an alarmist. I'm not a prepper, but I am prepared. Um, we hope that you got a little bit of information out of this, this video that might help you in the event of the next disaster or whatever the case may be in your area. Pretty much being prepared is being prepared. So if you found value in this video, uh, give us that thumbs up. Um, share this video with a friend, especially somebody that you know that might live in an area that uh, needs to have a certain level of preparedness. We appreciate each and every single one of you, and thanks for coming along. We'll see you in the next video.